Thank you again to Jacqueline for making yet another video, uh, sorry, yet another worksheet paper for us that I'm going to make a video on. Today is on logs and exponentials and we're going to get straight into it. So firstly, we just use the definition of, of logs and exponentials to say that this means a equals log to base 5 of 32 and the same one here. Now we're trying to work out a, b, so we multiply them together. We can't really multiply logs of a different base, so guess what? We have the Taylor Swift change of base law to fix that. So log to base 5 of 32 is log to base Taylor Swift of 32 over log to base Taylor Swift of 5. And the same thing over here. Now, of course, 32 is 2 to the power of 5 and 125 is 5 to the power of 3. We can bring those powers down to the front and then cancel out all the logs and we end up with 5 times 3 is 15 for our first answer. Fantastic stuff, Taylor. Thank you. Question 2. Find the product of these real roots. We're going to firstly put this 2 down at the front here and then square it to make 4 lots of that log thing squared. Um, leave the other stuff alone, except move this 3 over here maybe. Now this is just a quadratic, let log to base 10 of x equal u maybe, and we see that it's a quadratic that's pretty easy to solve. Uh, we have answers of minus 1 or 3 quarters. Now you can't be, uh, well actually it probably could be either thing, right? Um, so uh, we're going to have to uh, set them equal, uh, we're going to have to find both. So 10 to the power of 3 quarters is the first one, and 10 to the power of minus 1 is the second. Uh, it's asking for the product of the roots. So we're going to times these things together, which obviously means adding the powers, which gives us minus a quarter as our power for the answer of C. Question three then, continuing to follow uh, these definitions of logs by saying a to the power one third equals y and um, h to the power x plus one equals a. Put this result for a into here and times out the powers um, or just swap the powers because of course, if you're timesing these powers, that's the same as still timesing these powers, right? You're allowed to swap them. A to the power one third is two, and so the answer will just be C uh, right away. Nice little question done. On this one, we're going to put the x's on both on, on the same side and the non-x's on the other. We can factorize out the x and then follow log laws to say that we can divide the inputs like so. So of course, therefore, x is this thing, this log divided by this log. Uh, cancel down some numbers first, I guess, and you eventually end up with x is this. This is not the easiest way to do this question, but I obviously wanted to get out more pictures of Taylor Swift. So we're going to use the Taylor Swift log law yet again to say that, but this time we're going to use it backwards um, to say that log of this over log of this is going to be a single log of base this to this. Uh, and now we can say, well, 49 over 9 to the power what equals 7 thirds, clearly a half, and x will be a half, and that will be our question done. Question five then. Uh, so now we have um, this log and this log. It's a simultaneous equation. So y to the power of five equals x is the first thing we'll say. And over here, two to the power of all of this equals x as well. Set those x's to each other. And then of course, if you've got powers plusing like this, that means that's a timesing of bases originally. Two to the power of two is four. Uh, and two to the power of log two of y is just y because these all cancel here. And so this ends up being, of course, we can divide by y because y isn't zero because it's the input of a log over here. So we can divide by y safely, and we end up, of course, with y as um, the square root of 2, because root 2 times root 2 times root 2 times root 2 is 4. And then we're being asked for x plus y. Well, first we need x, of course. So um, x is y to the power 5, which is root 2 to the power 5. Now, root 2 to the 4, as we just said, was 4. So another root 2 makes this 4 root 2. Um, and then we need to add the two things together. Root 2 plus 4 root 2 is 5 root 2, and we'll have our answer. Question six then, another simultaneous equation, keep following log laws here. Two to the power, all of this stuff equals that. And three to the, oh sorry, first we need to get rid of this two, don't we? So let's put the two at the top here. Um, so, okay, first I'm dis, uh, desegregating uh, this stuff here, which is fine, just separating it out. It's just like the same thing we did before. This cancels and we end up with this. Now I think I'm going to turn my attention over to here. I actually just halved both sides, which is probably easier than using the y squared thing. Um, so that's cool. Now we can say 3 to the power of this um, equals y. Again, let's separate this out. 3 to the power 1 times 3 to the power of this, but 3 to the power of this is just this because the 3s cancel with the log 3. And uh, I, I also moved this half out to the top here um, such that we could cancel this, otherwise the cancelling wouldn't work. So in any case, we end up with 3x to the half equals y. We can probably throw this result into here. It depends how you want to do it. I actually just squared both sides. Um, and then I think, I guess, said... If you divide that by, oh, yeah, divide this by 9 and times it by 2 again, I don't know. It's kind of up to you. And eventually you'll be able to get this in here, um, which makes a quadratic in y. Um, you could have found a quadratic in x, of course, by putting this in here and then using a substitution. It's completely up to you. I think we all have it from here, maybe. 
um, y is that, y is that. Um, of course, that makes x this and that, just following maybe either one of these, really. This one's probably easier. 3 over 2 minus 1 divided by 2, or 3 minus 1 divided by 2 gets you these two things pretty quickly. And then uh, the sum of the smallest solutions, well, these come in corresponding pairs, right? So it's either this one and this one, which add to make, uh, I guess, 1.75, or this one and this one would add to make 4. So 1.75 would be the answer, which is 7 over 4. And uh, that would be that done as well. Classic question here, you just times both sides by log to base 2 of x to make a quadratic, which you obviously rearrange to make 0. Couldn't even be bothered to make a substitution here, I don't think. Just straight up factorise it. It's not too difficult. Um, logs can be negative, of course. So we have two solutions here that we need to solve. Uh, we end up with both of them. 2 to the power minus 1 is a half, which is where that comes from. 2 to the 2 is 4. And the sum of those two solutions is 4.5, which is 9 over 2. Not too tricky. This one's not too tricky either, because we can write 6 as a power uh, as a 216 by just saying it's 216 to the power 1 third. Just knowing your powers of 6 is quite helpful. And then we times out these uh, powers here, because there's brackets, and we end up with the answer pretty much immediately once we uh, separate that out. Or once we just have it, and uh, we have the answer of B very quickly. Lovely question number 9. Um, log to the base of half of 2. If we just call that x for a second, that means half to the power x equals 2. Um, what do you have to raise a half the power to to get to 2? Well, it's minus 1, right? Um, because you want to flip it over. But that's the case for all of these, right? Because they're all just flipping over to get their counterpart up here. So actually, all this is, is 999 minus 1s multiplied together. That's an odd number. So of course, the answer is going to be minus 1, I believe. Question 10, then. Uh, this is an arithmetic progression, which means this minus this must be the same as this minus this. The difference between the terms must be the same. Um, these are taking away so we can divide the inputs. Um, I've also just decided to, uh, oh, I've arranged. What have I even done here? I'm struggling to remember. Oh, this is the same as this, right? So let's add this to both sides to get two of them. Um, and then I put this one on the same side and moved that one over there. I'm struggling to remember why I did that, but I'm sure I had a good reason to. Put the two up here, um, then divide them. I mean, there, there are hundreds of ways you could have done this, I'm sure. Um, we can, in any case, you're just looking to remove the log 10s, right? You just want them gone. So now that we have log 10 of something equals log 10 of something else, we can just set those equal. We can times across here, um, because that's just cross multiplying to get to this term. Um, we can expand everything out, I guess, and this just makes a quadratic in terms of 2 to the x when you tidy everything up. Again, not sure I bothered to make a substitution here. It just straight up factorizes as everything will in Tamua. Pretty much, don't quote me on that, but it's pretty much true. This one has no solutions, but this one is just log 2 um, of 5. And uh, that will be our answer there. Uh, only a few questions to go, I believe. Um, another simultaneous equation here. So let's combine these logs together and these logs that seem sensible. Um, and then, of course, we can say 2 to the power 4 is 16, I believe. Uh, cross multiply the b over as well, divide by 4, and you end up with this. Then the next one, just the same, combine the logs together. 2 to the power 3 is 8. We can shove this result for a into here, divide by 8. b is clearly plus or minus 1, but it says it's positive, so b is 1, uh, which means a is 4. And then the value of 2a plus b is clearly 9. And that question's done as well. Next one I, I actually had quite a hard time with. There was this one and the last one I had a hard time with. I don't know whether I did this in the best way, but I think my logic just about holds up. Um, firstly, I just decided to... Um, Try and collect the logs up, as always, and then say 2 to the power of b is this. And then I think I rearrange this um, for x, which isn't too tricky, um, but you just do normal things, and eventually you rearrange it for x. And then I just stared at this for a long time, and I decided that the only thing that I really care about is that x has to be positive, right? x has to be positive for this to make any sense. So what happens here with different values of a and b? Well, if a is negative, 2 to the power of b is always positive, right? Um, so, but... If a is negative, then this whole fraction will be negative unless the denominator is negative. Now, to make the denominator negative, you would want to do 1 minus something bigger than 1. So you'd want b to be some positive number because 2 to the power anything bigger than 0 is bigger than 1, I think. So therefore, if a is negative, b has to be positive to make up for it and keep x positive by doing a negative divided by a negative. So I think if a and b, and the same logic applies the other way around, like if b is negative, then this becomes a small number and the whole denominator is um, positive, which means you need a to be positive to make the whole thing positive. So I think that either a has to be negative and b positive, or a has to be positive and b negative in order to make this whole thing positive, so therefore, and have a solution for x. So therefore, I think we have a solution if a, b is less than zero, if they have got different signs. 
And if they're the same sign, then we make a negative number in here and we don't get any solutions. And I think that logic just about holds up. Uh, the next one, um, very similar to something that was asked in a real paper, which is nice. Uh, B is a to the power of C. Uh, B is uh, here, sorry, A is B to the power of all of this. And here, C to the B is A. Now, what we can do here is we can put this result for B into here, um, multiply out the powers, and then because this is power one, we can say one equals this stuff over here. Uh, we can obviously solve that for C. We get two answers, one of which can't happen because C can't be negative um, because uh, it can't be negative because uh, because it's bigger than zero. Can you do log to the base of a negative? I should probably know that, um, but I'm flapping, so I can't, I'm not prepared to commit to an answer to it. It says C is positive over here. So, okay, we'll get rid of that one and we'll say C is a half. We can substitute that result into the all of the three equations, although really it only matters for this one and let's say this one. Nope, sorry, this one. These are the two most useful um, because now we can rearrange uh, this one. Uh, oh, sorry, I did also put it into this one, I guess. I did also put it into this one. Um, so now we have two results for A here. So let's set them equal to each other. And now we can just think about what the graphs look like here. B squared is just a U shape. A half to the power of B is an exponential that goes this way because it's essentially two to the power minus B because a half is two to the power minus one. Um, and in the positive region of B, which is what this graph is really talking about, there is one solution to this. B has to be positive. So therefore B is defined uniquely, which means of course, when you square it, that A is defined uniquely and therefore everything is defined uniquely and we're good to go. This next question just, uh, I don't know how many times I've said it, but just follow log laws super carefully and all your exponential laws as well. Here you times the x's together because there's a bracket. Um, here you could do log of this minus log of that, although I can't remember whether it's 100% necessary to do that. And here this is b to the power minus 1, which you might intend to move down to the front in the end. Now remember you can't do anything with logs timesing together, so we'll just leave this alone. Uh, this x squared from the x squared from here can come right down to the front. And we're aiming here to sort of make a quadratic in x, right? Where we have an x squared times something, an x times something else, and then this constant term. Now this has a repeated root, which means b squared minus 4ac equals zero for this quadratic. I don't know why I wrote that twice. Oh no, I didn't. Log to base b of b is of course one, so that goes away. And we have this. Now we say b squared minus 4ac has got to be equal to zero, so that's b squared minus 4ac. Uh, we expand some stuff out um, very carefully, getting the cross term and stuff, and we notice that a bunch of stuff um, comes together, and we end up with a new thing that's factorizable. And, and, and of course, for this to equal zero, that means the inside the bracket has to be equal zero, which means this thing is equal to negative that thing. Uh, we can cancel the a's out here and get c equals b to the minus one, um, which is which is just here. Or you can only cancel out the logs, of course, when this negative goes away. So we needed it over there like that. And then the answer is c, of course. Question 15, I also had a really hard time with. I thought it was a great question though, um, but had a hard time with it. The, the first step is to not really consider this object here but consider log of that object because now I can actually do some log laws on it. I can say this is log of this plus log of this plus log of that. And then I can bring all the powers down to the front as well. So we can actually make progress if we think about the log of the object rather than the object itself. Now, what do I do here? Well, look at this triple equality here. Just think about it in terms of the left two first. Um, log A over log B is gonna be this one over this one if we just do some cross multiplying. So if I divide everything by log B, which cancels this one out in the middle here. I can say log A over log B based on kind of shifting some stuff over here. Log A over log B is this over this. And I can replace that there. But also log C over log B, again, just thinking about these two, log C, if this one goes down here, over log B equals this one over here over this thing here. And we can end up with this. And now we've got rid of all the logs, which is amazing. We can times this by C minus A over C minus A to make everything have the same denominator. And then what you notice when you expand out all the numerators is that literally everything cancels, which is beautiful. And so the whole thing equals zero. So log of our expression equals zero means that our expression is equal to one um, because log of one is zero. And so the answer to this question is one. Just a great question. Thank you so much again to Jacqueline for writing that. I've put her email in the description below if anyone would like to contact her. Uh, for tutoring or for um, anything else really at all. I'm sure she's lovely. Uh, please do that and uh, I'll see you next time.